First, though, um, Ofsted is under growing pressure following the death of head teacher Ruth Perry, who took her own life while waiting for a report that would downgrade her primary school from outstanding to inadequate, the lowest possible rating. Um, we don't yet know the full details of Ruth Perry's situation, but her heartbreaking case has brought the issue of Ofsted inspections into sharp focus. Are they fit for purpose? Or should parents have more power? when it comes to rating schools. A host of questions that are being asked, right, by Kelly. Oh, wow. You've got so much experience with young people, <clears throat> going into schools and working mm. with young people. What, what's your view on where we stand with the Ofsted system? Um, I'm a really big supporter of good teachers, and I think that teachers are being let down. Um, you know, the Ofsted is outdated. It started in 1992, but what it's not doing is going with the changing needs of the young people mm. to this day. Um, I think that it's very results-driven rather than sort of personal attainment. I think there's pressures on teachers to get better results rather than kind of thinking about the needs of the school. I think there's too much paperwork, too much red tape. Um, I... I would say that you need to allow teachers to share good practice with other schools. I think the system needs to be put in place where it's more supportive and developmental and more kind of throughout the year rather than a two-day intensive inspection, which has to be stressful. You know, you're trying to still do your job. And what's to say, I mean, funny, but you do everything perfect for those two days. Does that mean you're a good school? Of course it doesn't, because what happens every other day of yeah. the year? And I also think that... Um, there should be, stop doing this like for like. You know, there's two schools, let's say, in different areas, one in a disadvantaged area and one in an affluent area, and yet they uh, put them up. What's to say that that one in the affluent area is a good school for the young kids? Because the other school could have brilliant teachers to educate, train and develop the young people in a really great way. So I just think it's out of date. I think I need to move with the times and I do think the system has to be more inclusive, the teachers have to have more say and it has to be an ongoing throughout the year inspection because at some stage it'll be good, some stage it'll be bad. Mm. But if it's only done two days then you never get the changes. Yeah. So I'm quite patient about that. Mm -hmm. Should it be that the parents have more of a say mm. within this sort of big discussion when it comes think, to the school as well? Because I think absolutely for sure. I mean, there's not really a great deal more to say because, you know, as Kelly so eloquently put it that way, there has to be structure and there has to be somebody, some kind of overseeing body that looks up to what... But should that be someone who spends more time on a regular basis mm. through the school? I mean, I feel sorry for... Ofsted as an organisation at the moment because the tragic death of Ruth Perry is, is, is something that doesn't happen all the, all the time and, of course, it's a really hard time for them. But, um, but I do think that we... I mean, years ago, I did a documentary for BBC called Playing the Part about 15 years ago and because I was playing a rubbish teacher in Waterloo Road at the time, they sent me to do a documentary playing the part of a teacher in the old school I used to go to, the grammar school. And at the time we were filming there, they were about to have the Ofsted report and, honestly, they were running around like headless chickens they said this is so terrifying for us we don't have any downtime we don't have any time to spend with the some of the children who need us for their emotional needs because all we are doing is preparing for the boxes to be ticked yeah. and it is no indication of how our school is run and we are just terrified of something happening where one box isn't ticked and they put us down as inadequate we know that we're absolutely not so I do think that as I say there has mm. to be some governing body but it, it's probably an outdated um, yeah. way of doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, as everybody else has said, I totally am in full agreement. I, I think, you know, the, the methodology... Hmm? That's a good word. Yeah. Using yeah, it, I'll stick with it. <laughs> of prevention is better than cure should be applied to something like this. And mm -hmm. as you've both said, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got somebody that you know that is there, that is monitoring everything on a not even just a, a two-day basis, but there's an office there within these schools that they're there to work with the parents, with the teachers, and, more importantly, with the students, because a lot of students and uh, that I've come across of late, they're saying, well, we're, we're doing this class, you know, we're doing chemistry, but we don't want... It's not re relative to what we actually want to do going forward. And there's so much pressure that's been put on young people and our children 
as it is, then you've got the teachers who are stressed, as you say, for those two days running around like headless chickens with the fear of God in them. And that anxiety will obviously be translated to the, to the children, mm -hmm. to the parents. What's happened to parents' evening where you get everybody together and you just say, this is the weak points, this is, these are the strong mm -hmm. points, let's work on it and let's work together to make the system work for everybody? I think it's yeah. just generally, though, these days, whether it's in the police or whether it's in the NHS or whether it's in teaching, there is so much red tape and bureaucracy that, that what's happening on the ground is not working. No. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's all to do with the, with, with, with the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like that when, you know, when Dad was in hospital with the NHS, they were saying, we've got to sit at this computer for so much time in the day. Mm. That's why other balls are being dropped right, left and centre. Yeah. It's got to the point where it's just got to go back to there being more Concern and just basic people's. common sense, I yeah. think, when it comes to... And each school is different, like you say, yeah. Kelly, no matter, depending on where it is, if it's an inner city school or it could be a, a little <clears> school <throat> in a village somewhere, it's a different way of having to teach different children. For sure. I mean, let's not forget, like, the teacher... We've all got a teacher that probably... Changed our lives. Changed yeah. our lives. Like, mine was my PE teacher. You know, yes, she had a role to play, but she was more than that. She identified talent and she excelled us in that talent. She was, for me personally, I will never forget Miss Page, Debbie Page, who's now a friend of mine, actually. And, she and you can still never call her she, by her first name. It's yeah, always my, good to my, Page, my friends can't. They're like Miss Page all the time. We're having dinner, <laughs> like at an Indian <laughs> restaurant, you know, no. But um, I, she was the first person that I called to say thank you when I come back from home from Athens with two gold medals because I never forgot her. Wow, that's but lovely. that's what teachers are there to do, and that's why they want to be there, to yeah. help develop young people, yeah. not to just write about it all the time. I and remember I you talking about the fact that it has maybe on children as well, mm. Brenda. I remember... Ofsted, I'm, I'm guessing it was called Ofsted when I was at school, the inspectors coming in and us as pupils being aware that they were coming in. Yeah. And I remember our English teacher, who we all really loved, and we were all on our best behaviour yeah. when they came <laughs> into the classroom to protect the teacher <laughs> <laughs> because we yeah. liked her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, that's how it's much it amazing. filtered down to all of us. So we were obviously aware of the importance of it mm. and the fear that the teachers had at the time of what this meant. This, and this I think the meant. effect yeah. of having an inadequate rating in a school that really doesn't feel that they are, it must be so bad for morale for parents, teachers, and the and and sure. the children. I'm not saying that there aren't inadequate schools, but yeah. mm -hmm. I think that there's. Uh, I, I think some. You know, I've talked to a teacher who said that when they when they got that result, everybody was so mortified and surprised because yeah. they had a very 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 happy. You know, happy, happy school. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, sure. Of course, we're thinking of Ruth Perry's family <laughs> right now. I mean, it's a terrible time for them to have to deal with. Um, Ofsted's uh, regional director for the South East, Matthew Purvis, has um, been in touch to say we were deeply saddened by Ruth Perry's tragic death. Our thoughts remain with Mrs Perry's family, friends and everyone at the Caversham Primary School community.